Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be doing some mixed media art journaling with you but first I'm moving into a new art journal so I just need to prep it a little bit. This journal, I can't remember the make or the brand but it was a gift but I do know where it was from so I will be able to link it if you are interested. But The first thing I'm going to do is take out a couple of the signatures and I know some of you might be going oh what are you doing you're ruining it but I know from experience how much art journals bulk up and I do not need all five of those signatures it's beautiful I think it's cotton rag paper so it's lovely but it's very very thick and I just know I'm not going to need that much and taking out those two signatures it's easier to do it at the start of the journal rather than doing it you know when it's already bulking up with other things and you realize I need to take some out now and it also means I have loads of that lovely paper that's come out of those signatures to use in other projects and things, so that's nice. I'm taking some masking tape and just putting it down where the, the binding for the signatures is because there wasn't enough left over to tie them back up again. And because there's like a lovely crisscross of the binding on the spine, I didn't want that to get ruined, so that's why I've covered them up. I know it doesn't look particularly attractive, but I will get around to covering up at some point. But because it's that like sort of leather thick binding I don't know the official name for it it's just you can't stretch it and retie it or something so anyway that's why I put the masking tape over it and now I'm prepping my first pages to do a spread on as always I put some masking tape up the center washi tape is also fine it just stops all the paint and everything from going through that like that middle part and then it kind of seeps into your other pages and things so I always do that and then I'm adding a layer of white gesso now often when I'm doing an art journaling spread I like to choose some papers or a paper pack or a collection or something just to sort of start me off to be my inspiration for the page. This time I chose the 13 Arts uh, Vintage Summer paper pack, it's only five or six papers and I only end up using one of those papers but as I said it's often an inspiration point to get me started. So what I'm going to do with this, I really loved those flowers on the sides of both the page so I'm taking my water brush pen and kind of painting on the water where I want to rip. It's a common thing that people do. It works much better on tissue paper or collage paper or napkins, but it helps a little bit when you're tearing card or paper. It's not as good, but as I said, it helps. I will now apologize for the lighting. I know I keep doing this in my videos, but I am still getting used to the new craft room, having these skylights and the sun beaming in at certain times of the day. And obviously the sun is stronger than my studio light, so you get these sunbeams on the desk. And as I said, I'm still figuring it out. The problem is I generally film videos in the afternoon. That's the best time for me to do them. But that's also the time that in summer, at least, the sun beams right onto my desk. So I quite like it when I'm actually doing the project, but I can see it's a bit weird on video. I'm still, as I said, I'm still trying to figure it out. Anyway, I've pulled out some Tim Holtz collage paper here. As you see, I'm doing the thing with the water brush to rip the sections I want, and it works much better on the tissue paper than it does on the card. But I'm not really trying to rip out any particular images or anything. I just wanted it certain sizes. But yeah, so I've got that ready, and then I'm going to use... Well, I kind of re-added some more white gesso to, to the general background so it would be nice and wet to stick the tissue paper on. And then over the top, I add clear gesso and that's so the surface of the tissue paper is, you know, ready to have paints and inks and all sorts of things splattered at it. If you use a, a gel medium or a collage medium, it's a shinier surface and, you know, other mediums aren't going to stick to it as well. I realise many of you will know that and the reasons for using clear gesso and the reasons for using certain mediums, but you never know who's watching who might be brand new to all this. So anyway, with all the tissue paper and everything down, I am going to just cut up a few little embellishments and bits and pieces to use. These were some freebies from Marami Small Art when I placed an order with her the last time I was able to because she can't ship to the UK anymore sad face but she does have some printables which I have purchased because I just adore those flowers that she does they're so so pretty and I love them and her butterflies as well so yes I'm gonna cut out a few of those and also that sort of browny peachy vintagey color of those particular flowers was perfect for the layout I was gonna do so another thing I wanted to bring into this project was some of my own handmade paper. I know I banged on about it a lot in my previous video, but I wanted to bring it into an art journal uh, page just, just to see how it worked with various mediums and stuff. Just a lot of experimenting going on on this page. Now I am using 
collage medium or gel medium? Um, I can't remember now. Gel medium. Oh, yeah, I can see it on the screen. Duh. I'm using gel medium to stick the handmade paper down just because it's a little too thick and heavy to use with clear gesso. But I wasn't putting any or barely any clear gesso over the top of the paper because, as I said, I wanted to experiment and see how it handled paints and inks and other mediums as well and then I'm also going to use the gel medium to stick down those card flowers that I'd ripped out just because again they're too heavy to stick down with gesso. Quick side note, um, if this voiceover sounds a little bit disjointed here and there I'm very very sorry I just keep getting interrupted, don't know what's going on, I'm apparently in very high demand for the half an hour I sit down to record my voiceover but Anyways, right, what am I going to do next? I did film this a couple of weeks ago, so if I forget things here and there, that is why. So once those are stuck down, I think I wanted to go in with some paints. I'm using Dina Wakely acrylic paints in the colours. I did write them down. Buff and Apricot. They're ones that I use all the time. I think they're some of my favourite colours because they've got that lovely vintage -y, just neutral colours and they go with pretty much everything. I did do a quick dry with my heat tool because of, you know, some of the glue and stuff was still a bit wet. So that's why I just did a quick go over with the heat tool. And I'm not really doing anything interesting with the paints. I'm just dabbing over a lot of where different elements of the background collage meet. So where the handmade paper meets the tissue paper, the tissue paper meets the flowers, just doing it around there. So there is a sort of it blends in better, there's sort of a smoother transition between all the elements, not loads of really ugly lines and things. And then I did dry that layer of the buff paint, which I used first, um, so that when I put the apricot on, they wouldn't mix. And I think that apricot colour really lifts the page in general, adds a much lighter colour to it. It's not all completely blended into each other. Now, I know I said before with the buff paint, I was trying to blend the different elements, but you also want to highlight that there are different elements at the same time. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's kind of what I was trying to do there. And then once I'd put the apricot down, I decided we needed a darker colour as well. So I came in, I think I use um, archival ink in sepia and I'm going to use a blending brush to add that on. I did just do a tiny little test patch like in a corner that would, wouldn't be seen or would be easily covered up in case it looked awful and went horribly wrong. I generally do that with most projects. So I just did a little bit there, see if it worked. It does work and then I'm going to keep going with it. And again, going around the edges and things, adding some low lights and some shadows to contrast against that very bright and vibrant, well, relatively bright and vibrant apricot colour. Looking at it on camera, it's a little bit more subtle than it is in real life. It's probably the studio lights making everything look a little bit lighter than it actually is. But that, that darker contrast, as I said, in real life is a little bit darker. Hopefully you'll be able to see it in the finishing pictures. But then I decided I needed to do some stenciling. I think because it was one of the first times I art journaled in such a long time, I wanted to do all of the things. So I have this damask stencil, I'm sorry I don't remember where that particular one was from, and I am blending on archival, ah, blah, blah, archival ink in, again I did write it down, in coffee. And again what I did with that is I did a little bit of, on the edge just to make sure that the colour worked with the page and everything before I really went in with the stencil. And I like the way that turned out. I think it added a darker element that the page really, really needed. So after that, I needed to, to decide what my focal point and everything was going to be. I went into this page with absolutely zero plan whatsoever, apart from wanting a slightly vintage vibe. Um, I pulled out some new bits. These are, I can't remember the name of these. They're like the Tim Holtz portrait people things, but the particularly large ones. I went through for ages deciding which one to use, and I chose this lady. I thought she kind of had this sort of sad but whimsical look to her, and it just, it suited the page. I can't really explain why, I just thought she fit. And then I'm going to have a layer underneath her and slightly behind her of layering up some more of that handmade paper and then those flower elements that I'd cut out before. So using gel medium to stick all of that down and then I'm going to go around most of the elements, not all of them, um, but most of the elements, particularly the flowers, again bringing back that archival sepia ink so that was the nice dark elements around my focal point so you know your eye goes there first.
Then, for the sole reason that it was sat on my desk looking at me, I added this little bit of ribbon trim because, as I said, it was just right there. It was looking, at, it was left over from another project. I went, you know what? I'm going to stick that on. I use red line tape to stick that on. It's a bit fiddly doing gel medium and ribbon. I always end up with it all over my fingers, and ugh, not a fan of that. Anyway, to add a general title to the page, these are the Tim Holtz um, word card things. I'm having serious brain fog today, trying to remember the name of things, but. Flashcards, that's what they're called. So I really roughed up the edges of that with a distress tool and as you see, like screwed it up in my hands and opened it up again. Went around the edge with that sepia ink again. I did stick it down with gel medium, but it was really popping up where the, the ribbon trim was. So I've stapled it down as well, just to be safe. Then I wanted butterflies because it's me and I have to put a butterfly and or flower on every single project. And I chose um, some kind of lighter colour ones that I thought went better with the general aesthetic and theme of the page. And then I decided there needed something to be, there needed to be something on that left side, um, just something. I pulled out a very old Kayser Craft sticker sheet from my stash and found this cute little quote that I have, as you see, ripped into like little segments. I've used some more of my handmade paper behind it and I'm stapling that on because I'd had the staples at another part of the page I thought it would be better to bring them in at another part rather than just look I was like I was stapling down something because it wouldn't stay down adding staples to another part of the page makes it look like the whole thing was on purpose and again I'm adding the sepia ink around those with that um, blending brush so it's all everything matches and that quote does stand out as well then after adding my butterflies, I'm going to take some Stabilo all pencils, mostly the brown one, and go around the edges of all of those elements that I want to stand out and then activate the pencil with my water brush pen. I was having some trouble, some of my elements weren't fully dry yet because, because I'm lazy, and so I, instead of like drawing with the pencil and then activating it with the water brush I did it the other way around and just picked up the color straight from the pencil with the brush but as I said going around all the elements just to help them stand out a little bit and I also went around the butterflies with a white Posca paint pen because as a lighter element I wanted them to have a lighter highlight to them So after doing all that, I still felt like a darker element was needed to the page, just a little something of a darker colour. So I'm adding some very subtle stamping. It's like a handwriting effect stamp, and I'm using stone grey. Was I using dove grey? Oh no, dove grey ink. 
again just to add a slightly darker element and I just I think it helps the whole page in general and then to finish off I am of course going to add splatters I added some splatters in distress oxide spray in tea dye that's the one tea dye and then once I had done those because the distress oxide spray insert it kind of spreads out a bit you don't get very obvious I don't know how to put it like round circle splatters stronger splatters I need a better word but anyway because of that I want to add some more like obvious white splatters so that's where I bring in my Winsor & Newton white drawing ink to do that step and with that my page is complete so there we go thank you so so very much for watching please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed uh links to all the products you use will be in the description box where they are available including my new handmade paper which is in my etsy shop and yeah that'll do it thank you again so so much for watching and i'm gonna go bye bye